Hey guys, Cockapunk here, coming with you with uh, part one of the conclusions from the barrel testing that we finished up. Um, we're not actually finished up with barrel testing, but we're finished up with this phase of barrel testing. Um, just wanted to quick explain to you where in the heck the accuracy vector came from. We make numerous mentions of the accuracy vector, and I wanted to go through mathematically how we derive the accuracy vector. Um, so what happens is we shoot a pattern onto the board, and every single shot we record its coordinates. That's what you see in the data table, the X and Y coordinates. Now we took the standard deviation of those. The standard deviation is a measure of the spread of, of the pattern. Then what we did here is we, um, we graphed the X standard deviation and the Y standard deviation in terms of the y in the y direction of the axes and the x in terms of the x direction of the axes. Now, those naturally are perpendicular to each other, so they make a right triangle with the accuracy vector. So easily enough, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the accuracy vector, the length of it anyway. We would need to use tangent if we wanted to find the, the angle of the accuracy vector, but the length is more important to us because the length represents a radius. Um, now, there is some discussion, and I would love to have somebody who knew more about applied mathematics than me talk to me about exactly what that physically means, but here's what I think it means. Um, one standard deviation should contain 68% of the shot pattern um, in either direction. So, when we normalize that, that, that radius should be a circle that contains 68% of all shots you fire. Um, now, I'm not 100% sure of that, but if you want to think of that as a representation, I know it's not categorically wrong. Um, <clears throat> so that's the vector. Now, we can do all sorts of things with the vector, and what I did is I built some confidence intervals off the vector. Uh, a confidence interval is just um, when we take a sample of only 20 or 25 shots, um, we're applying that sample of 25 shots to a sample of technically infinity shots every shot that that barrel system has produced. Um, and so obviously one of that mean, is the true mean, is going to be different than the sample mean. And the confidence interval just looks at the true mean versus the sample mean. And so uh, it gives you a range in which the true mean can fall. And so uh, what we have is uh, the confidence interval gives us a really good bearing as to the error involved in the system. And so uh, I computed the uh, error regardless of measurement error. That doesn't al allow for measurement error. Our measurement error is probably a half to a full inch plus or minus. So combining that with the with the confidence interval, um, they're really, I mean, we had a few barrels that shot outside the confidence interval, but not a whole lot and not by any major margin. What that tells us is, what that tells us is, um, there just really isn't that large of a difference at 50 feet uh, between any of the barrels we shot. Even the rifled barrels, even the die barrels, one piece, two piece, the length, the 21 inch barrel still produced a reasonable shot pattern. Um, they all tended to shoot a, a pretty dang nice, um, a nice pattern at 50 feet. So, you know, I, re I actually honestly thought that at 50 feet we were going to see a difference in accuracy. Um, we didn't, which makes me uh, think that we're going to have to punch this out to maybe 100 feet or 125 feet to look at accuracy again um, at the really long ranges because um, at 50 feet there just wasn't a statistically significant barrel that shot better. And Bryce did a categorical uh, analysis in his, if you look in the data sheets uh, at the last page, he grouped the barrels in terms of one piece, two piece, underbore, overbore, matched, um, there was a rifles and, and stuff like that. And he compared them to the mean as far as um, how far above or below the, the mean of all the samples was. And he came up with the same conclusion is that overboring wasn't more accurate, underboring wasn't more accurate. It was all pretty much the same at 50 feet. Um, now, as I said before, I thought we were going to see a difference at 50 feet, and we didn't. Uh, I talked to a paintball place, an indoor place around here. They're going to let me do some testing either this spring or this summer at longer ranges because uh, Chris Nathan's warehouse is not that large, and we can't punch that out to maybe 125 feet. Uh, we make too much of a mess in the 
to begin with. So um, we should be able to look at that. But you know, if we look at barrels from what we know right now, you know, we we judge barrels based on accuracy, based on oh, quick. One thing to be said here is I'm not going to I'm definitely not going to say that all barrels shoot about the same accuracy at 50 feet because uh, every barrel we tested in this test was a high quality barrel uh, was known to be of good manufacturing quality and so uh, the conclusion here is basically any barrel that is made to good quality um, whatever that may be I don't know because I haven't seen the spec sheets on these barrels but any barrel that is reputedly of good quality will probably shoot about the same pattern at 50 feet um, so if we think about this in terms of barrel selection between our chronograph testing and uh, okay actually I should talk about the chronograph testing quick we did a part one on this barrel test where we looked at the chronograph testing and um, what we saw in the first chronograph test was a bell curve where it was underboring was the most consistent paint to barrel match was the least consistent and overbore was pretty damn consistent um, we saw that with both the Freak and the CCM kits now when we tested with the CP kit we saw underboring is still the best paint to brown match was slightly worse and overboard was slightly worse than that um, which is contrary but in either case underboard still shot the most consistent um, which I mean still makes sense whether whether you want to overbore or be paint to barrel match uh, I mean we'll probably try and look at that again and see what we can do to see what happened on on either this test or the previous test uh, but but uh, I mean that still shows that underbore is both the most consistent and the most efficient because in the efficiency aspect of that test the one piece barrels seem to get better efficiency up to about 14 inches um, and now depending on the, your porting pattern that's going to float between 12 and 14 probably but um, that means a, a relatively short one piece barrel is going to be your most efficient barrel um, in terms of most consistent it seems almost categorically that the two piece barrels with a small back and uh, a relatively short front shot the most consistent um, so again under boring shoots the most consistent so um, what we have in terms of barrels is accuracy consistency um, efficiency and ball breaks we thoroughly looked at ball breaks and the barrel is pretty much uh, not important in terms of ball breaks. There are things that are far, 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 far more important than your barrel in terms of barrel breaks. Um, so that's even across the board in terms of barrel selection. Efficiency. The one piece barrels were better, but underboring was also better. And underboard one pieces were ideal, <laughs> up to about 12 or 14 inches. So, um, so that goes to the underbore and the one piece. Uh, consistency was the two-piece or the underbore um, both of those did well and then accuracy at 50 feet was across the board the same so you can see we kind of have a choice between chronograph consistency and efficiency in terms of do you want a one-piece or a two-piece but it, it's looking like um, it's looking like underbore is still superior uh, in every way and there's still really no reason to shoot an overbore um, in terms of our testing so uh, I gotta wrap this up because I already went long last time when I tried to film this but uh, again this is only part one of my conclusion um, there's still a lot more to be concluded from this data I did some graphs uh, comparing accuracy to uh, shot to shot consistency and stuff like that and um, there's still plenty of conclusions to be made from this data but this is just a start uh, as far as the thing and as I said before we're gonna definitely have to collect more data to look at a longer range because I honestly thought at 50 feet we were gonna see a difference and we didn't so we're gonna have to punch it out to over 100 I think um, anyway catch you guys later uh, we're gonna do the crush test here coming up and we still got the alien backspin bolt test which Jack Rice has been uh, gracious enough to uh, to um, lend me an alien for that test so we'll finally put backspin bolts to the test um, like officially and we'll be done with that whether they work or not um, so it, I mean exciting stuff coming up hope you guys are staying tuned and uh, I'll talk to you later alright